the story that you're going to hear to see today is um, about a man that we met on a world tour to declare the end of the nuclear age. And that was in 1999, and we're still oh, struggling with that. Uh, but we... Um, but at that time, um, you know, with the building up of not only nuclear power, which was very popular and still is to some extent, uh, one of the byproducts is um, depleted uh, uranium, plutonium. Um, and it's used to make weapons-grade plutonium, which then proliferates into weapons that uh, plow through and melt through metal armored cars and destroy lots of lives. Yes, yes. And so the linkage between uh, nuclear energy and nuclear weaponry was of concern um, and still is to this day. Yeah. So um, we were part of an entourage of artists and activists and we went uh, to all the places that had some kind of nuclear issue such as Three Mile Island, Nevada where they tested the bombs. Um, we went to Japan and Germany. Um, we would have gone to Chernobyl but things were a little too hot. They said it wasn't still not safe. But it was planned by this uh, uh, a team of artists led by Jim Barinholtz who's a performance ritual artist and um, under uh, a lot of inspiration and as the team built up we provided ancient myth and story around the sun, and then we joined with musicians and uh, other theater people, poets, etc., and went to these places around the world. Yes, and so that's how we met Takashi, and uh, and as we performed at each of these many places, he would tell his story, we would tell our story, and at some point we both looked at each other and we wanted to do his story and he wanted us to do his story yeah. so that is what you're going to see the word you're going to hear is hibakusha oh. it's the japanese word hibakusha are the atom bomb survivors and it's a community of people who um were there um uh within the, the effect and survived both the bombings of nagasaki and hiroshima and um Takashi was um, six years old at the time of the event. Eight. He was and eight. He was um, 60, 60 when we met. Right. And he was only like eight. six tenths of a mile from ground zero. Oh, and he was eight years old, yeah. He happened to survive happened. the attack because he was playing hide and seek and he ducked under a desk and that literally saved his life. So, so we met him on this peace pilgrimage. And this is his story. Tanamori. Uh, Takashi is what we call a hibakusha, the Japanese word for atom bomb survivor. And he had a powerful story, a heroic journey, actually. And this story that you're about to see is his life story that he asked us to do. And we call it Takashi's, Takashi's Dream. Dream. He was an eight-year-old boy, full of mischievous spunk. Takashi Tanemori finally arrived after the birth of three daughters. Takashi was the firstborn son, a little prince of a boy, finally arrived after ten long years of marriage. And now his Okachan, his mother, could be officially accepted as a Tanemori daughter-in-law. Oh, with a twinkle in his eye and a body brimming full of energy. Takashi had a laugh that was contagious to everyone around him, but that was soon to change. For he and his family sat in the sweltering heat of a bomb shelter on that late night of August 5th, 1945. Takashi! His hand slipped out of his father's hand, and he found himself following a voice into the shadows. 
Takashi, this dream is for you. The boy continued, as if under a spell. He turned back to call out to his parents. He could still see them, but they stood there lifeless, as if suspended in a timeless world, and his cries could not be heard. Takashi, follow the dream. Where are you taking me? Who's calling me? But even as he asked these questions, he found himself being pulled deeper and deeper into the dream. Takashi, it is time. The boy stared into the darkness and he saw a translucent figure slowly taking shape. Oh, oh, Otochan, Pop, is that you? The boy shielded his eyes as the shadow grew brighter and brighter until in that hazy brilliance, the shadow took form and standing before him was the most beautiful crane he had ever seen. Majestic, bold, tall, yet soft. His feathers were as white as freshly fallen snow on a moonlit winter's night. It spoke with the voice of an ageless child. Takashi, I am Senbasuru, as mighty as a thousand cranes. Come, let us take to the sky. Without hesitation, the boy climbed upon the back of the mighty crane, and up, up, up they soared into the night sky of ten million blazing stars. By the powerful strokes of its wings, Semba Suru and the boy soared over Takashi City, nestled between seven glorious hills and fed by seven glorious rivers. The breeze caressed Takashi's face as he watched the Seasons transformed the landscape below. He could smell the sweet fragrance of spring blossoms. And the August air heavy with the sweet green pungency of summer. The hot days of summer fell into an autumn chill as he watched the hills turn into a blazing array of crimson red. Yellow. Gold and orange. Sa, 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 sa. Takashi and the bird settled upon a large boulder in the middle of an open field. But when Takashi looked around, gone were the many colors. The smells, the, the sounds. A winter, colder and more lifeless than he could even imagine, had settled over his beloved hills. Villages lay silent, and barren tree branches hung like, like weary bones on naked skeletons. A gray powder covered all like a blanket of death. Not one single blade of grass grew in this most dismal place he once knew as his home. Senbasuru, why do you show me these things? Takashi, promise me, always remember your father's words. Live from your heart, Takashi, and remember who you are. Live from your heart, no matter what happens. Senbasuru, why do you weep? Suddenly. A light in the distance against a gray sky, growing bigger, getting closer. And the air began to broil. And a rumbling sound like 10,000 10, thunders thunder shattered, shattered, shattered the sky. sky. And a huge fireball hurled itself across the sky at Takashi. The mighty bird took to the sky once more, but it was too, too late. late. Before Takashi could reach for the bird's legs, the bird was swallowed by the fire. No! Takashi collapsed to the ground, and he looked up and saw the great crane, Senbasuru. But even as he was swallowed by the fire, its peaceful and gentle voice rang out. Do not be afraid, Takashi. I will return. Senbasuru! Takashi sat all alone, his sobs echoing in that cold, gray winter. And through that gray, black ash and orange ember drifted down from all that was left of Senbasuru and the fireball. Oh, how he ached to be back with his family. Oh, how he longed to be in the arms of his mother and feel the safety of his hand in his father's strong hand. To hear the laughter of his sisters, his younger brother. But now he felt... So alone, so alone in what seemed an eternity. Suddenly, he heard a sound. Yes. It was a music. 
Music, music like none other he had ever heard before. There in the burning sky, orange and black embers turning into orange and black butterflies. Yes, hundreds and thousands of fluttering orange and black wings painted the sky. As all Takashi's fears floated away with the heavenly creatures, Tenno Shisha, Tenno Shisha, the butterflies, and the music lifted his spirits. Takashi, I am here. It is Senbasuru. Senbasuru. But Takashi looked around and the mighty white crane was nowhere to be seen. But instead, amidst the shimmering of orange and black wings, a single white butterfly descended down into the boy's outstretched palms. Takashi, remember your promise. Always live from your heart. And remember who you are. Live from your heart. And the butterfly opened and closed its wings and then lifted up, up, up into the sky. Takashi, you may awaken now, Takashi. Awaken now. Wake, Wake up! up! 1985. Takashi had almost fallen asleep behind the wheel of his old beat up Chrysler. 1985. He had left Turlock, California about an hour ago and was now heading across the San Francisco Bay Bridge to attend an anti-nuke rally in the city. The nuclear disarmament movement was slowly building and Takashi, now 48 years old, delivered inflammatory speeches that charged the rallies throughout the Bay Area with the horrific realities of nuclear weapons. He was a hibakusha an atom bomb survivor, and the featured guest speaker for the evening's protest. Tonight would be no different as he pounded the podium. Shouted the atrocities. And accused the U.S. government of mass murder. Peace? Huh. Americans making peace in the world? Huh. They don't even know how much evil they create. No, Americans will never understand real peace until they have suffered like, like I have suffered. Takashi's brown Chrysler began its trek across the Bay Bridge, beams and girders passing by, marking time and space. Angled trestles of the bridge passing by, one by one, reminded him of the painful chapters in his life. Each beam shared the great weight of the Bay Bridge, much like the weight upon Takashi's shoulders. For the last 40 years since the bombing took place. I've been such a failure. Indeed. Although he appeared charismatic and spoke with a certain eloquent authority, he alone stared at the bleakness of his own personal life. Oh, she closed the restaurant behind my back. And then the two heart attacks. Oh. And then the divorce. Oh, ex-wife, kick me in the head, why don't you? Even his children were like strangers, accusing him of living in the past too much. But his worst failure lay irretrievable, deep in the cracks of his psyche, deep in the cracks of his heart. An ancient vow made as a child upon his father's grave. I will avenge my father's death, you'll see. But as yet he had not succeeded. Maybe my sisters were right. Maybe I never should have left Japan. Indeed, his sisters had accused him of betraying the family name when he left to live in, in America with the people who had killed their family. Oh, in fact, they had wished him dead and conducted a mock funeral for him as if it were for a dog. Takashi unbuckled his safety belt, his right foot pressing harder upon the accelerator, the car racing forward 75 miles an hour, 80, 85 miles an hour. He swerved recklessly across the lanes, aiming towards the railings on the bridge. Oh, what's the use of living now? What's that sound? It's like a song I remember. It was a song from his childhood. And as he began to sing this remembered song, his right foot relaxed, releasing the gas pedal from its suicide mission, and he began to drift back, back in time. 
ちょちょちょおちょ、なのはにとまれ、なのはにあいたら、さくらにとまれ、はなからはなへ、あそべよとまれよ、あそべよとまれ、あそべよとまれ。Fly, sweet butterfly, fly, land on sweet cherry blossom. And when you are finished, fly into another flower. And oh, oh. And when you are rested, go from flower to flower, land on any flower you wish, until you find the one that brings you joy. Oh, oh. おばあちゃん、グラマー、はい、グラマー、おばあちゃん、お、はい、お、マンジュ、お、スイートスティキーライス、レッドアズキビ、うん、おいしい、お、またマンジュください、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、じいちゃん、グランパ、お、お、グランパ、グランパ、come on、you promise me let's go let's go、right、グランパ、come on、あつあつにね。Let's go swimming in the river, you said. Let's go, come on. Hayako, Hayako. Oh, 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 Grandpa, look. The hills. So green. Let's go hiking. Yeah, yeah, hiking. Oh, look, Grandpa. So kire. Pretty and midori. Green. Takashi. I'm gonna tell. Sister, Satsuko, you're a tattletale. Papa, the sensei, the teacher, caught Takashi using his left hand again. Takashi, I've told you many times before, you are a Tanemori from a respectable samurai family lineage. And so, you're the one who must act properly. You have a tradition to carry on. Why, even your name, Takashi. Takashi means noble man. So, you must act in the proper way. Uh, your left hand,、um, Hidari,、uh, Kitanai, it's dirty. Uh, uh, Mama, tonight at dinner time, you tie his left hand behind his back. He'll have to learn to eat with his right hand or no food at all. Takashi, ne, use your right hand, huh? Oh. They look the same to me. How could two things that look the same be so different? One is good and the other is bad? We're only trying to help you, Takashi. Oh, Satsuko, you're a tattletale.、Oh. Ah, ah, stop that. You stop. Papa, Takashi is chasing me with a stick. <laughs> But is he using his left hand or his right hand? Papa! The Americans took away my childhood. <laughs> I'll make them suffer tonight. Takashi began practicing his speech with renewed bitterness and fire. But his throat began to close and his eyes began to tear. For Japan had shunned him too. They labeled him Oyanashigo, an outcast because he was fatherless. The people called Masete Ita a hoodlum. What would you expect from an orphan child thrown into the streets to survive? Eating from garbage cans, sleeping under bridges, stealing from poor farmers. But what about Takahashi sensei and Nakamura sensei and certainly Tamura sensei? Without these noble teachers, why, Takashi might still be a hoodlum today, even dead by now. Now, now the Japanese called him Hibakusha. The word for atom bomb survivor. To the Japanese, the Hibakusha, these survivors were, were shameful reminders that Japan had lost the war. They were outcasts, a caste of untouchables. Takashi gripped the steering wheel with fists that shook. Right, left, good, evil, America. Japan, America, Japan. No, I'm an American citizen now. I pledge allegiance I to the flag of the United States of America. To the flag of United States. And to the States. Republic. Republic. For which it stands.
stand it. I can't stand it. Standing, standing, standing in the grape fields of Delano, California, 1955. Working the valleys of San Joaquin and Stockton and Delano. Under God. 1955. Indivisible. (laughs) Someone dusted my food with, with pesticide. <laughs> laughing at me as I was sent to the to the hospital. And hey, a real life specimen from the A bomb. <laughs> oh, don't touch me! No. Hey, does anyone speak ja- Japanese around here? No. They use me as a guinea pig. Uh, we can't understand him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Spinal taps every day. <laughs> no. They locked me up in a mental ward. It drove me crazy. Crazy. No. <laughs> Someone help me. Someone help me. Mary helped me. Mary was the nurse. Mary, she loved me. And she brought me to the white man's God. Eventually, I got a scholarship to attend a Bible college in the Midwest. Hey, we can't have a Jap around here for a minister. No, no, you don't understand. I I have changed my name. You can call me Thomas now. Thomas? Oh, who made you an American? No, I'll show them. I can survive. I'll get a job. I'll work at the car wash. Just clean my car, you dirty Jap. I'll show them. Gambate. Noble struggle without complaint. Gambate. 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 Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, your wretched refuse from your teeming shores. Send me the homeless Tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. So, so I open my own doors. To my own restaurant. <laughs> I became a sushi king. <laughs> oh, I even had my own TV show, too. And then the Americans asked me. Not just anyone, but they asked me. <laughs> me to, to introduce the wonders of gabu, 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 turkey meat to Japan. <laughs> they dressed me up in a cowboy suit ooh, with my cowboy boots. Shiny cowboy buckle and tall cowboy hat. Oh, oh, the Japanese respect the tall hat thing, you know. (laughs) And they called me Turkey Tom, all American. Yeah! Yeah, bo, yeah, yeah, hey. Yeah, bo, yeah, yeah, hey. Anyone for turkey teriyaki? Oh, is she? <laughs> How about some turkey sashimi? Oh, delicious. <laughs> Anyone like to try some uh, uh, turkey sushi? <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we Americans, that's me, you know, like to think of the turkey meat as the California tuna. California, here I come. But the Japanese call it Shichimencho. 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 Seven faced bird. Shichimencho. Seven faces of deceit. Shichimencho. Like the Americans. Takashi, you traitor, go back where you came from. Right back where I started. From right with liberty back good just bad evil left right choose Takashi Japan choose. America choose. Japan choose. Japan, choose. Japan, America choose, Japan. no no don't make choose. me choose no Takashi slammed on the brakes he hadn't seen the truck pull in front of him oh, he shook his head to wake up and that's when his eye caught something there. There beyond the Bay Bridge, a huge billowing cloud in the shape of 
a mushroom cloud. Suddenly a ray of sunlight burst through the clouds. And in that flashing moment, no! Takashi was hurled back in time. Not again! To that fateful morning in his schoolroom in 1945. Blinded by tears, Takashi was forced to exit off of the Bay Bridge onto Treasure Island. And there, all the pain that was lodged in the cracks of his heart for the last 40 years spewed oh, out oh, all the, the horrors of that sixth day in August. And those who on fire. Was he dead? Was he alive? a stranger carrying him. Oh, so hot, so hot. Oh, oh the cool waters of the river. Oh, oh, dead corpses floating by. Oh, the smell of burnt flesh. Skin dripping from faces, arms, legs. Oh, the moaning and the wailing. Oh, a crazed mother walks by with a headless baby on her back. Oh, Yoshi, Yoshi. Everything's going to be all right, baby. Everything's going to be all right. Yoshi, Yoshi, don't cry, baby. His black oily rain pours from poison skies. Yoshi, Yoshi on fire! On fire. Papa finally found Takashi. Papa and son crying, clinging to each other. Papa carried son all the way to Kotachi village. Safe, away from Hiroshima. Papa and son. Sister's brother. Together, safe, together. together. But Mama was never found, nor baby sister, nor Obachan grandmother, Ojiachan grandfather, Oneyasan, old as kind as sister was next to die, and then Otochan would be dead by winter in that cold gray winter never again would one single blade of grass grow in hiroshima sat in his car, parked on an island in the middle of the bay. 
Above him a great bridge spanning from east to west. He wiped his tears, his vow to avenge his father's death now surged anew in every cell of his body. He turned to fasten his seatbelt, straightened his hair, reached to turn the key in the ignition, when... Suddenly, to the open car window, a flew a white butterfly. White butterfly. White crane. I remember, I remember that dream so long ago when I was just a young boy, the night before the bomb fell. The dream of Sambasuru. Takashi, remember your promise. My promise. To live from your heart, Takashi. My heart. And remember who you are, Takashi. Yes. Live from your heart. That evening, in San Francisco, as Takashi mounted the stage and approached the podium, he took a long look over the sea of eager faces, waiting for his fist-pounding speech of fire and bitterness. But instead of revenge bursting from his heart, that night, for the very first time, he spoke of forgiveness. And as he spoke, he remembered the tears that flowed and the hope that flowed when on that very first spring following the nuclear holocaust, he had found one single, single blade, blade of grass, grass, small and fragile. But green and growing through his beloved Hiroshima. And as the crowd rose to cheer him on, as so many millions of stars blazing in the night sky, their tears glistened like his. For this noble man, Takashi, had finally come home. Home to a place called peace. Takashi, mm -hmm. you have awakened now. Mm -hmm. Go, my heavenly creature, from flower to flower and spread mm -hmm. your joy. Semba suru suru, semba suru. Ten no shisha, ten no shisha, semba suru. Semba suru suru, semba suru. Nano honey tomare, ten no shisha, ten no shisha. Hana kara hana e, asobe yo tomare yo. Asobe yo tomare, asobe yo tomare. Fly, Takashi, fly! Takashi's Dream a story of man's journey from hatred and revenge to a place of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now you know that if Takashi can forgive our country, forgive his own country, forgive the deaths and the destruction of his culture and his family, certainly we can begin to think, ah, maybe I can forgive my mother <laughs> or my sister or my... Um, brother-in-law or my best friend that used to be my best friend or whatever has happened in our lives it's 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 not easy yeah. all too often we think that forgiveness is a place of weakness and leaves us vulnerable or that it means that we're supposed to um, uh, forget what happened or to let it go but it will stay in your memory and we have to honor that the event did happen but the forgiveness that happens is really for healing oneself so that you don't uh, you don't eat yourself up with the, with the anger and the resentment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It is hard. And even, you know, that old thing, make lemonade out of lemon. And even when there are blessings that come out of these horrible experiences that you've had, that one's had, um, it's still hard. Even when you recognize the blessing, it is still hard to receive. But it's something that we all need to always move forward toward. Because it will release so much of this pent-up, tied-up energy that otherwise could be used for something far more positive in our lives. There's a, there's a, um, a quotation that I found or a saying that something, it goes something like this, that forgiveness is the violet that has been crushed by a shoe's heel and still releases its fragrance. Yeah. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, we, we also have this piece, if you want to share it with other people, it's on a DVD that we did. Obviously, that's what you saw. But it also has other stories. It has, um, first of all, it has a, an actual uh, interview with Takashi himself, who still lives in, in Berkeley. Um, he, is, he, he has very narrow vision. Um, he's Blinded had, by the atomic blast. Yeah, he's had some cancer in his legs, but he's... He's an amazing man still. And a visual artist with what little bit of his retina can, he can yeah. still use. And he actually wrote a book about this, far more detailed, and it's really very good. So it's Takashi Tanamori, T-A-N-E-M-O-R-I. Yeah. But also on our DV is the Bird of Happiness from Tibet, and also Amaterasu, Japan's uh, sun goddess, and her battle with the storm god. And... Yeah the light winds. Yeah, to continue though with the Takashi's life that um, as I mentioned in the beginning we we're part of a peace project uh, and uh, while meeting him we continued another project called the forgiveness project so we uh, told the story we brought Takashi along he could interact with the students and in um, several cases we went to high schools um, and worked with uh, an ongoing workshop that had it was a series of, uh, of sessions that I had with uh, kids that were chosen by the school counselor who were having issues around um, abuse at home and neglect at home. And when they saw the story and they had to meet Takashi and to go through this, this healing process of forgiveness, uh, the um, counselors had tracked the incidences of violence and found out that the incidence started to drop and, and lower. Yeah, so we had, you know, forgiveness was only one of the modalities I used as a therapist to to help them through this stuff, and it was it was a stand, it was wonderful. Another project we did in Hawaii with the forgiveness project is we went uh, into the prisons in uh, for Oahu youth. for youth, and uh, we did it first for the the male section. No, it, the females first, okay. and the girls just fell in love with Takashi and asked him to move in to the jail with him. We, said, <laughs> we have an extra bed here. Yeah. And then we did it for the boys, and the boys cried. The girls didn't. The boys cried, and they wanted Takashi to give them something to hold on to in order to help them get through their lives. Uh, it, it was amazing. Yeah. Story, obviously, is very powerful, and this story is very powerful. So please share it uh, with with. You can, you know, with all your friends, let them know about it. You can be seen again on YouTube. It, it'll be played um, whenever you want it to do. Um, also, you can buy the DVD. You can go to ethnotech.org, our website, and order it. You can also do donations through PayPal or uh, Venmo at Nancy Ann Wang, W-A-N-G. Nancy Ann, because I'm from New Orleans, so it's Nancy Ann Wang, W-A-N-G. So don't throw away that DVD player. Dust it off, <laughs> plug it in, and play it. You know, maybe stack it on top of the VHS player. <laughs> you can. Um, we still have all our VHSs and our DVDs. <laughs> but also, um, uh, if you like the streaming, uh, we do this every month. So we will see you next month. Thank you again so much for coming and joining us. All right.
Takashi Tanemori. I was born in Hiroshima, Japan, back in 1937. After I lost my parents by atomic bomb, I survived for the next 10 years in Japan. Then, when I was 18 years old, I came for, to America for revenge. Revenge, revenge for Americans. Avenge the death of my fathers. God put a lot of burdens with my own heart. And I feel like I, I was carrying a heavy load on my back. But when I look at it, when I look at my own my own self, the forgiveness is something that I have to make a choice. Because just like that wound that I have, if I continue to pick in this old wound, then I'll be creating another new wound. So it is that I am the one that going through the pain, the suffering, additional suffering. It's not the person who hurt me, but it is I am the one. So in order to release that, what do you do? The heavy, the desire, anger, and all this, to become the heavy, the anchors that tie the ship to the bottom of oceans. You cannot set yourself free. The ship cannot set sail freely because of the heavy anchors held down. So forgiveness, in a sense, you cut loose, cut the anchors off from the ship, so finally the ship can sail through freely. I think that's the forgiveness. So it's not that somebody else, it's for you and for me that I find the freedom in a sense. Free and no longer held by the weight of the anchors. Since the 1945, 60 years gone by, and we are hoping for peace. But yet, we experience the wars continuous raging around us. And the question is, how can we stop the war? In the midst of the raging war, I find my own heart how you could find the peace. It's first, foremost, stopping the war. You in my own heart. When the raging war is going on around and seeing in my own heart raging war, no wonder we can stop the global war because of my own. So, first and foremost, for me to find the peace, creating a global peace, to find the peace in my own heart first. So just like in the eye of a storm, once you go through the darkest cloud, it's got into the inside eye of a storm. From there, you could see the perspective. Yes, raging was going, but when you have a peace in your heart, everything's gonna be okay, everything all right. That's the forgiveness.